a snowy day in Philadelphia and it is time to vlog. Uh, one thing I gotta say to all of you is uh, don't let the weather stop you from making moves because if you do, you'll never get anything done, especially in Philly. So if you think it's always sunny here, then uh, stop watching TV. So I'm at Green Line Coffee right now and I am sitting down with Sarah Moore and an empty cup of cold brew. So the energy is there. I know I don't seem like it. It's just that there's a lot of people here. So uh, let's meet Sarah Moore. Hey, what's up? Hi. So what's your name? I'm Sarah Moore. And what do you do? Art and shit. Um, I'm a bass player in a like indie girl punk band called um, Midnight in Rome. And I also do like visual art with like watercolors, Copics, and also uh, digital art. Gotcha. Mm -hmm. All right, let's talk to you for a bit. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. uh, you said you're an artist. Like, mm -hmm. what type of art do you do? Um, I started out by kind of just teaching myself with, like, pencils and stuff like that, and then I moved on to Pigma Microns okay. and um, got really into watercolors as well, picked up acrylics, and now I really focus a lot. I've been doing a lot of work with Copic markers, okay. um, which is kind of like a vice of mine because um, they're really expensive, but, like, amazing. And, um... I've done a lot of work with like programs like Adobe Illustrator. Gotcha. And do you ever like do commissions or is it mostly like for yourself? Um, I've done a, a good amount of commissions actually. Um, I had this whole series where like it kind of started because I was watching um, Atlanta actually. Like, <laughs> such a good show. I just so finished season real. two. It's so real. Like, Teddy. <laughs> as, as somebody who like my parents moved to um, you know Georgia after I graduated high school but I'm from like the Philly area. Um, just seeing like Donald Glover's character where he's like I'm broke as shit and everybody is on this like money life I'm like yo fucking big mood yeah. um, and I was just like dude I just like love this guy so much so I did a piece where um, it was called like St. Donald of Atlanta or something like that and um, you know I grew up Catholic and everything like that and I don't let that shit like dictate how I live or how I view people whatever uh, but I've always been kind of inspired by Catholic art because I think that shit goes off um, so it was kind of like in a stained glass kind of style, like Catholic style, and like made him look like a, a saint and everything like that, whatever, and it just like, it blew up, at least in like terms of when it comes to like how much traction I get. True. So I'm like pretty small. Um, but it was also like really timely because this was right around when like This Is America came out and everything like True. that. True. And so then that kind of started like the series that I made where it was like at first like kind of like a personal thing that I was doing where it was just like people where I was like, they're dope, I love them, I'm gonna make them like look like a saint. Right? True. And um, so then I got commissions from other people where they were like, oh can you do this person like this? And like I got a few people who were like, like ask me and I would reject them kind of because I was like uh, but I don't I don't fuck with that person like I'm not doing that you know but um like they a little messy so we're not, I'm not picking them as a saint like I actually had my um my best friend she was like hey can you do Sid Vicious in like the same style and I was like honey I ain't doing that um, so I still ended up doing it but I made him look like a sinner or whatever he had like True. horns and like fire and all around whatever um but because of that, I ended up getting traction with this um, girl who's actually a famous photographer in Philly called um, Phoebe Mo. On her real name's Morgan on Instagram, and uh, I got in contact. With Should her. I drop her handle? At yeah, the... you can drop her handle. She's like absolutely amazing. I'll put that in the description. Yeah, she's like super duper nice. Okay. Um, and so she was seeing all of my stuff. Um, that I was getting commissions from, and I also did different, like, you know, people that I really cared about, like Frida Kahlo and everything like that. You did a t-shirt for me? Yeah, I did do a t-shirt for him. This Thanks, is, this almost is all sold out. After that. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Money. <laughs> um, no, I loved doing that design. That was a lot of fun. Um, but yeah, so my drummer is actually really good friends with her. Like, they went to college together, University of Delaware, all this stuff, or whatever. And so I would, like, comment on her Instagram thing sometimes when I saw that they were out together. I was like, oh, damn, so cool, blah, blah, blah. So then, she ended up asking and was like, hey, do you know this girl? Like, I'm doing an art show, you know, and she does this art show called Time to Pretend every two two years, mm -hmm. twice a year, um, biannually, whatever. And it's like all just female artists from the tri-state area, basically. And um, so she really, like, you know, pulled through for me and, like, I did a whole, again, like, featured my whole series, basically, at this art show. Um, and it went pretty well. I did, like, I had Beyonce, Laverne Fox, um, Oprah, and... Somebody else. Frida Kahlo. Gotcha. I had Prince of All Beasts. I still have Prince of Beasts, if anybody wants any. Um, 
I love my Beyonce one. I, I think that was like my most popular one, but it was also my favorite, so I don't blame people. Um, but yeah, and I ended up doing it actually when I was in Berlin. My best friend Molly, she um, went and took care of it for me basically because sure. right? it was like September 29th of this past year. And it was like a really awesome experience. Like, I mean, I obviously wish I was there physically, but regardless, it was like really cool being able to have like commissions and, you know, kind of push myself um, and do a lot of visual art. Gotcha. Mm -hmm. And um, like... There's two questions I have. Mm -hmm. One is related to like your art and your like beliefs, and two is like related to music. Mm -hmm. um, you said that like like it started off personally. Like, yeah. do you think art for you always starts as like being personal first, whether you're doing it for commission or for yourself? Yeah, absolutely. Because I know like like again, I still had some people who were like, "Hey, do this person." Yeah. And I'm like, uh, I don't know. You know, like I don't. I'm definitely not like one of those type of people where I'm gonna kind of. Um, you know, let money rule my morals, I guess. I understand that. And um, so a lot of it starts out personal, and I think, like, right now I'm kind of reverting back to making my art, like, way more personal and everything because of the fact that I was doing so many commissions over the summer. And also, like, I was in Berlin this past fall, and so it was, like, a very cathartic experience for me, so I was trying to do a lot of art related to that, and I didn't want it to be influenced by money or by like what people wanted me to do and everything and I think that's like a common thing with art on Instagram is the idea like if you want to get views, if you want to get popular, if you want to get money from it, you have to be doing art in a way that people want you to do it. And I think there's something to speak when it comes to like just general talent in that way, but also like it becomes like a very like not monochromatic but like monolithic type of platform in that way and so I think that um, I've definitely tried to keep my art personal. I really love doing commissions. If it's something that I really want to do, it's something that I'm really passionate about. Even if I'm not super passionate about it, if it's like something that's fun and everything, that like I really love doing commissions. But I really, art has always been personal for me, and it's way more about you know expression and also finding like personal growth and kind of satisfaction out of doing it more so than doing it for other people. True, mm -hmm. and like you just came from Germany from being in Philly. I mean, we know each other from Philly. Yeah. Did Germany like affect your ability to create like artistically or musically? Yeah, absolutely, because um, I mean, I couldn't just like bring my bass on the plane. Um, so that was a huge thing for me actually, was not being able to make music there because I would just get pent up. Like I would just be on the, the train and just like thinking of and like dealing with like just being there and everything. Cause I was there for like four months. Um, so it's not like it was like, oh, I was there for three days and I was so inspired. You know, true, it was like true. I really was living there. Um, and so I would like sometimes because like, I wasn't able to play my bass or anything like that, that I would just like sit on the bus and just like write up song lyrics and stuff. And I unfortunately haven't done much with that because I've been focusing on doing shows and also my band has got a, a new singer and everything like that. So I haven't been able to have time to really create anything. Now. Um, but that was something that was really difficult and also because when I was there like everyone has always told me when it comes to studying abroad that it's basically like neo 8th grade and I get there and they're like oh welcome to Germany do work and I was like what do you mean because I was just like expecting True. to be able to like have a YouTube channel do art True. like go out all the time all this other stuff and um you know, they really had me reading big ass readers of just dead stuff. This wasn't Harry Potter. No, it was dead. Gotcha. Um, and but then I got good grades, which is like annoying. I thought I was gonna fail, but whatever, that's a different story. Um, so it definitely like inhibited my ability to create, but I think it also allowed me to be able to create different things, I guess. Like I think I did like a lot of really interesting good art while I was there. Um, I obviously wish I could have done more. But I think I have, I still have, like, I always have so many ideas, and sure. um, I definitely want to work on that more. I mean, like, I did a post recently that was about, like, honestly, like, doing drugs and partying all the time in Berlin and everything like that, and it kind of sucks because I think that piece didn't get a lot of traction as my other ones have, when they're, like, a little bit tamer, but I was still super happy with it, like, artistically and also, like, personally, because, um, you know, I think it was, like, for me at least, like a very good in between of like artistic expression and narrative telling, which is something True. that I've like tried to work on. Understandable. Yeah. It's really good. So like musically, your your bass is at midnight room. How long have you been playing bass? <laughs> uh <laughs> way longer than I'd like to admit for how good I am. <laughs> okay. It doesn't matter. Um the real question is like how does music and art intersect for you? Because like I know for some visual people mm -hmm. Like when you're writing music with your like band or like for yourself, right. that like it's almost like you're painting 
the music yeah. because if the song doesn't paint a picture in your head then the song's not worth it yeah. so like I know that's the case for me for video because like I mean granted I'm a vlogger as well as a musician right. and I have directed my own music videos right. I see myself as a musician first mm -hmm. but like I definitely believe in like the thought that like if I can't see like a visual with the song, then the song's not worth playing to people. Yeah. So like, how do you feel? That was a little bit of a lead, but like, how do you feel like with your art and like, and music and how it intersects? Um, for me, it's, it's like an annoying paradigm because of just like the idea of like having enough time and everything to create because I think I like satisfy different like expressive emotional needs when it comes to doing different forms of art. Like I think visual art becomes way more introspective and way more about myself and everything. Sure. Like obviously I'm posting it to Instagram and everything and like maybe there's something to speak to the fact that I shouldn't feel the need to commodify my own personal expression, whatever. But um But you're valid. Yes. So don't say that about yourself. No, I know. I'm always too critical of myself. But um, just like on a baseline, it, is, it becomes about what I want to convey. It's True. Like, which I guess you can experience with solo projects, but it's also a matter of the fact that it's not performative art. True. And I think in a lot of ways, like I was so pinched up when I was in Berlin because of the fact that like music for me is so cathartic. And I feel like it, it's like cathartic in the way that like just like you know, when you're in a car and you're just by yourself and you're scream singing to a song that you really like, like, you're really able to just, like, get out everything. True. And I think you can only do that so much with, um, you know, pen to paper, and I think there, there, there are aspects that you can really kind of express and kind of, like, take a load off when you do do art visually, but I think, like, being able to get in front of the stage with people and be like, listen, like, this is it, like, this is what I'm talking about, you know, um, and really, like, getting it out there um, is a really incredibly cathartic experience, and I think that's something that I really wish I had when I was in Berlin, um, just because, like, I was just going through so much, like, just, like, True. learning so much, and also, re like, reflecting on, like, my previous experiences, and also, you know, reflecting on what was happening right then. Mm -hmm. Um... And I mean, that's like why, like, you know, um, I don't know what I'm going to do with this song now that I have a new singer, but um, one song that I wrote for Midnight in Rome was all about just like this creepy guy or whatever. And it was super cathartic for me to sing it and everything, like, just because of the fact that it was like, one, I got validation from the crowd, and two, it was just True. like, you know, just cathartic to be like, nearly like, fuck you, you know? True. Um, and I feel like, yeah, like, each one has its own value, but I think for right now, I'm leaning towards, like, loving and understanding the value of, like, doing music just because of the fact that I haven't done it in a while. But it's like the, you know, once I do music more, I'm like, oh, I miss doing, like, expressing myself visually. True. So does that become, like, hard to balance sometimes? <laughs> yeah. Your face is like, Lord. <laughs> yeah, that's the thing. I think I always get really down on myself, and I always uh, feel really bad about, like, the idea of people who, like, really are able to commit themselves to one thing, and they're, like, passionate about one thing. And I'm sure, like, there's probably people who are in that category where they're like, oh, well, I wish I could do it you know, multiple things, True. and I honestly wish, you know, in a way that, you know, I could have a renaissance man moment and I didn't worry have, to, have to worry about getting my check all the time, so I really can focus on art, but I think, you know, I also get in my own way where it's like, oh, well, I could be doing art, but I'm on Instagram. True. You know? So, True. Um, I think it becomes the dichotomy of the idea that I feel as if I don't have enough time and not prioritizing time, and also... Like, feeling is, like, jealous in the way that I am not always able to commit myself 100% fully to one discipline. True. You know? And I wonder, I, like, this is, like, something I was constantly thinking about the past few weeks, past few months, is the idea of, like, how much better would my art be if I was only focusing on just visual or just... True. You know? You know, not to sound like a sage, but I've gone through the same thing, and uh, there's this book called... Uh, that one thing as mm -hmm. about being able to commit yourself to one thing mm -hmm. but the big mission without buying the book because mm -hmm. hashtag advertisement <laughs> is that struggle's real no matter what you are yeah. and like the biggest thing is knowing how to discipline yourself so you can set a goal mm -hmm. to one thing at a time as you're working on that in, yeah. in chunks so yeah, I think you'll find your groove yeah dude this makes me want to go home and just like because uh, I'm doing, um, to get off track, but also still on track, like, I'm doing my honors thesis about, like, black liberation movements in the United True. States or whatever, and, um, one thing that my honors professor or advisor brought up with me was the idea that, like, I could have done 
art for my art project. And so now, like, I've been just, like, so inspired by all my research and everything that I've definitely am now trying to do a series where I'm going to be focusing on Black Liberation and leaders, and currently I'm doing one on Fred Hampton. Um, and so that's been kind of cool, um, like, the idea of being, like, inspired in that. True. So, on top of all that, you know, you're, you're creating art, you're working on your thesis, what's Midnight in Rome doing? <laughs> we, we doing a lot. Um, okay. <laughs> I feel like we're always all over the place, we're always like, True. yeah, let's tour, like, let's record, let's do all this, you know, and it, it's just like, again, it's a matter of, like, getting your check and figuring out your life, you know, and now that we have um, our fourth member, Ariana, who's such a freaking little angel, um, you know, it's a matter of also like figuring out everyone's schedules, which sucks. Um, you know, I'm jealous of people who are like, like my boyfriend's band. They're always practicing and stuff, but it's like they all live within two blocks of each other. Yeah, that's easier. Yeah. So, because my drummer lives in Fishtown, Ariana lives in Germantown. Um, you know, Molly lives up at LaSalle, which is close to Germantown, but I live in West Philly. Yeah. Um, yeah. So right now um, we have a show on February 9th. Link in the description. Sure. Um, we're playing with like two two of my fucking peeps. Uh, we're playing with um, Lazy Eye, who we're really good friends with. Love them. I love Hannah. Um, we're play playing with them and also Mandala. Mandala's from Connecticut. Uh, they're female fronted, but they're they're super duper cool. Um, Sean's really cool from that band. Um, and I've always tried to book them and everything. And I like played with, or I saw them one time. And they're just like super sweet people. Sure. Their, their music's really good, so I'm super excited for that. Um, but then after that, we're definitely trying to focus on uh, creating new music and also recording. True. Because we're actually going to, um, we're trying to record with the drummer of Jesse's band, uh, or both of his bands, Colin. And um, he's actually trying to make a record label called, like, Saucy Boy Records or whatever. And so Ooh. we're going to do, like, art for art. And so um, I'm making him a logo, and then he's like, recording us and stuff. So I'm super excited for that. That's probably going to happen after our show. Uh, I probably imagine around, like, the end of February we're going to record or, like, something like that. True. And, like, hopefully maybe get something out by, like, the end of March. But, like, I'm always saying shit, so, like... Don't don't take my word for it unless I'm really posting about it on Facebook. But what what's most important is you follow the links in the description <laughs> and you support and you stay posted. And you don't care about paying five dollars a store. True, exactly. <laughs> Do you have any other last remarks? Um nah, It was great talking to you. Mm -hmm. I will see you next week. Peace. Peace, peace. Thank you, Green Line, for uh, letting us do this vlog here comment, like, subscribe, and I will see you guys later.